I'm Lee Bidgood, ethnomusicologist and professor at East Tennessee State University. I'm now serving as a Fulbright Scholar at the Faculty of Humanities at Charles University in Prague, Czech Republic. And I've known Zuzana Yukova since she hosted me as a Fulbright student in 2002 at the ethnomusicology that she founded just a few years before that. And since then, a lot has changed. And these days, it seems like there's a lot going on in the ethnomusicology program here. Yes, indeed. Since your first days in Prague, our program has expanded substantially. Now we usually offer 10 to 15 ethnomusicological courses per semester, half of them in English. We teach both Czechs and international students who study in the English program of the faculty. And we also provide so-called block courses, usually in the form of summer schools. Some students come just for them. Last year for the summer school on Romani music, for example, two students came from California, one from Turkey, three from Israel, etc. And besides, after certain hesitation, we started Applied Ethnomusicology. And that's exactly the theme I hope to get to. Can you say something about what you're doing in terms of applied work here? Yeah, at first, a certain context. Czech society is extraordinarily homogeneous. Some 5% are foreigners, officially registered here, but the two largest groups are Slovaks and Ukrainians, who are culturally very close, and their appearance is practically indistinguishable from Czech. Our colleague Ruth Davis recalls her strange feelings when visiting Prague for the first time and witnessing the absence of other than typically European-looking people. But how is that possible? I mean, we're here at the center of Europe, at the crossroads between north and south, east and west, as Bruno Nettle has described the Czech lands. I might expect it to be just the opposite. Yeah, this is the past. Bruno Nettle refers to the time when his family lived here happily, the interwar Czechoslovakia, which was relatively multicultural. For example, in the 1930 population census, you could declare not only the Czech ethnicity, but also German, Polish, Hungarian, and in the only country in Europe, Jewish. Czechoslovakia was an asylum for Russians escaping from the chaos of post-revolutionary Russia, as well as for those who were endangered by fascism in Austria in the 30s, for example, the Mann brothers or Arnold Schoenberg. But Jews were killed in the war and Germans were expelled right after it. And in 1993, the Slovaks created their own state. What remained was a society which, because of the Iron Curtain, was completely unused to meeting others. The only others were Roma, living in Central Europe for centuries. And this actually hasn't changed much even almost 30 years after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Well, so how would you in more detail describe the situation today? You could hardly imagine what has been happening in the last years, mostly in connection with the migration waves. First, the Czech Republic doesn't grant asylum to almost anybody. In 2016, 148 people were granted it, about 10% of the asylum seekers. At the same time, Protection against foreigners became a dominant, perhaps decisive topic in political discourse in the last year parliament, as well as in presidential elections. This is especially remarkable because in the Czech Republic, there hasn't been a single attack by foreigners. In my opinion, for the Czech Republic, one can very well apply the assertion of the EU Commissar Guy Ver Verhofstadt, who said, I don't think it's a real migration crisis. It's a political crisis, and I would say ethical crisis or crisis of values on the backs of migrants. What do music and ethnomusicology have to do with all this? My starting points are three concepts which, in my opinion, work. The first comes from conclusions of Frederick Barth and other Scandinavian anthropologists that borders, or in their vocabulary, boundaries of who are we and who are they, are in our heads. Second, that 
according to psychologists Cole and Hall, prejudices, which are the basic source of the current situation in the Czech Republic, cannot be easily eliminated with the help of information because they come primarily from emotions. The connection to music is obvious. And the third idea, to which Thomas Turino repeatedly refers, is that a collective music making integrates the involved community or, let's say, redesigns those community boundaries. And I'm also encouraged by a historian of culture diplomacy, Daniel fossler lucier who confirms that even a small number of personal contacts emerging for, from joint music making bring a long-term profit to a society. So how do these theories, these ideas, play out in the projects that you're undertaking? Uh, first, I organized a course called Collegium Ethnomusicum at the faculty. In it, I invited a family of my friends, Romani musicians. They taught students songs of their father, a famous band leader. In short, the course was successful. Students witnessed how it changed their opinion about Roma and how much they liked them. That's why I decided to try to broaden my reach, although the face-to-face -face character had to be kept. And the result is the project now called Let's Play Together. It exists on two levels, university and high school. The first level means that three times a semester we organize afternoon musicking, each time with a different musician who, although representing a different culture, lives permanently in the Czech Republic. Uh, besides Romani musicians, whom we intend to include every semester, last semester we invited a singer from Bosnia and a Greek musician, and now we are looking forward to a Mongolian singer and Morin Hur player and a drummer from Gambia. Uh, musicians speak about their lives and teach us music, which is in some way important to them. Students who participate in these seminars are from our faculty and are oriented more in an anthropological direction and also from the pedagogical faculty, thus future music teachers. Thanks to a grant for applied science projects, we can make short professional videos of these seminars and these videos are available online. On the second level, we contact high schools, which we often knew previously, and offer them these workshops. They can choose musicians from the online videos, and the musicians are always accompanied by two students' assistants, for whom this could be a good experience, I think. And what has been the response to these programs? Uh, it goes very well at the faculty. Students' feedbacks are unequivocally enthusiastic. Regarding high schools, we fine-tune details. For example, what was easy at university is sometimes too demanding for high schools, etc. And also, we are facing a well-known problem. Those who are interested in such a project are usually those who, from the social point of view, need it less. In the near future, we intend to find ways to involve schools close to excluded localities or generally more of a challenge. I will report back to you next time.